Hello everybody, um, in this video I will talk about confidence intervals and how to use your calculator to construct confidence intervals for population mean. Also, how to interpret your result once you're finished with computations. Okay, so let's review a little bit of basic terminology. For confidence intervals for population mean, what do we usually have? We're given x bar, which is a sample mean of certain size n, that's your sample size, and we would like to create a range of values to approximate mu, which is the population mean. Now, um, in this situation we will actually have sigma given to us, uh, and that's population standard deviation. In real life this is uh, not going to happen very often. Uh, it's kind of unrealistic to assume that you know sigma but you don't know mu. Usually once you know sigma you definitely know the population mean. But I guess it could happen. And then I call E as the margin of error and Z of alpha over 2 that's going to be the critical value uh, required to construct um, confidence interval by hand. So. Before constructing a confidence interval, we should really check a couple of conditions. We must have a simple random sample, and then sigma is known, and then we either have a population that's normal or a sample size large enough. Then if we were to do this by hand, we would compute our E, which is margin of error, by the following computation. Z of alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n. Now, I'm actually not going to require you guys to do this by hand. We can use our calculators to do this. Okay, now let's take a look at the most common choices for confidence levels. So we have 90, 95, and 99%. These are the most uh, frequently used levels, and the corresponding alphas are here. So we get this alphas over here. You will see this again once we get to hypothesis testing. So what you need to know is um, the z-scores associated with each of the confidence um, level. Okay, So if we have alpha 0.10, then the z-score is 1.645, and you, we're only really going to need those numbers when we're computing sample size needed. Okay, uh, For confidence intervals, you're not going to need them because everything down on a calculator. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a problem. We have the following example. According to the National Health Statistics Report, um, a sample of 361-year-old baby boys in the United States had a mean weight of 25.5 uh, uh, pounds. And they also tell us that the population standard deviation is 5.3 pounds. Okay? So they tell us that the population standard deviation oops, is... Given. Okay, it's 5.3. Okay, that's your sigma is known. When we have a situation where sigma is known, we will be using z interval to construct this interval. Okay, so what would I do? Go into my calculator and I'm going to go to stat. Once I turn it on, let's go to stat. We scroll to test, and z interval is command 7. Okay. Now, if you had an actual raw data, you would plug in your data in L1 and compute your standard deviation and plug it in, in there. Okay. But we do not have data, so we scroll to stats. We have statistics that's given to us. And here, you just plug in your numbers from the problem. So, population standard deviation is 5.3 pounds. The sample mean was 25.5. 25.5. Okay. Sample size is how many babies? We got 360. And the confidence level is 95%. So it's already given to us, so let's go ahead and compute it. Okay, we have 24.953 um, to 26.047. Okay, so the last thing that you need to do when solving a problem like this is actually write an interpretation. So what would I do? 
I would say the following. We are 95% confident that the interval from 24.95 to 26.05 pounds actually contains the population mean weight of all one-year-old baby boys in the United States. Okay, so that's one way to interpret the um, confidence interval that you just got. Okay, again, what am I saying here? When 95% confident that this interval, 24.95 to 26.05 pounds, contains the actual population mean weight of all baby boys that are one year old in the United States. Okay? So, then you could ask a couple of questions here. Should this confidence interval be used to estimate the mean weight of all one-year-old babies in the United States? And the answer is no, because this sample only contained baby boys. And the weight difference between boys and girls is actually significant. And that's something that we will be testing later in Chapter 10 uh, when we will have two samples. Okay? So here you would say no, it should not be used to estimate the weight of all babies because the sample itself contained baby boys only. Okay, And then for part 3, what does it say here? Based on the confidence interval constructed in part 1, is it likely that the mean weight of all one-year-old baby boys is less than 28 pounds? And we'll look at the confidence interval that it's given to us, that we constructed, and we say yes, it is very likely that the average weight of these boys is less than 28 pounds because the entire confidence interval values, they're all less than 28. Okay, So that's how you would use your calculator to construct a z-interval and answer the questions and interpret the interval itself. Okay, So again, when sigma is known, when you have population standard deviation, then we use z-interval. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem. What if sigma is not known? This is a situation that is more realistic, okay? When sigma is not known, we still want to have a way to approximate that mu. So, we will have a sample mean, sample standard deviation, okay? We no longer can use normal distribution to model this. Now we're using student's t distribution, which is very similar to a normal distribution, okay? And then here, if you take a look at this formula right here, it's very close to what you've done um, before, but now you no longer have z values, we have t values. Um, and we have sample standard deviation, sample standard deviation, okay? Um, we also have degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, but you will not need to know this. Uh, because we're not going to use tables to compute these t-values. We're only going to use the calculator, okay? So, how do you know when you need to use t-interval? Okay, let's take a look at the next problem. In a sample of 123 hip surgeries of a certain type, the average surgery time was 136.9 minutes. With a standard deviation from that sample of 123 surgeries, 22.6 minutes, okay? So nowhere in the problem does it say assume the population standard deviation. Now this standard deviation right here comes from this sample right here, all right, which is S. So that's how you know that we need to use T interval to construct um, this interval here. Okay, so where is it? Still in the same place, we go to stat Test. And it's actually command A if you eight if you go all the way here. Here's your T interval. Okay. Same way we have statistics that's given to us. So let's go ahead and plug in. So X bar was the average surgery time 136.9. Look, now we have S of X. We no longer have sigma. So you Sample standard deviation is 22.6, 22.6, okay? And the sample size is 123. So 
still 95. Let's go ahead and compute it. And what do we get? Okay, we get 132.87 um, up to 140.93. All right, so what's the interpretation? We are 95% confident that this interval from 132.87 to 140.93 minutes contains the actual mean surgery time for this procedure. Okay, so the actual means, mean time for the, all surgeries of this type is contained in that interval. Okay, so the second part says, okay, what if you were to construct 99% confidence interval? Okay, uh, would it be the same, would it be wider or narrow, but with the same data? What would you do? Well, you can go ahead and just compute it and see what happens. But let's think about it logically. If I wanted to be more confident, right, so the confidence level goes up to 99%, it would make sense that I would probably need to cover a wider range of values. Okay, so I'm gonna make um, I'm gonna make um, this conclusion that the interval should be wider. Okay, well let's go ahead and check it. So if you go back there to stat test and you go back to your t interval, and instead of 95, let's go ahead and change it to 99. Let's see what happens. Okay, we have 131.57, 142.23, so the smaller value is now even smaller, and then the, the larger value, the one on the right, is also larger than before, so this interval is definitely wider, and it makes sense, because we would like to be more confident. Okay, so when do you need to use T interval? When sigma is not known not given to us and this is a more realistic uh, situation than when stigma is given okay all right thank you for watching